Today, we're going to find out how much King Salman bin Abdulaziz, the king of Saudi Arabia and the leader of the 1.4 trillion House of South, really spends. Because the Saudi king will not hesitate to spend money on a nice vacation, even if it means taking seven planes or bringing your own golden escalator to get off the plane. When we were kids and heard stories about ancient kings like Mansa Musa who wore golden robes when he traveled, or others like him, most of us thought they were just stories. Even though this is mostly true, there are still a few monarchs who really understand what it means to be a royal. King Salman Abdul Aziz is one of them, and he is the most important one. And be ready, because some of his spending and requests have been so extravagant that they have led to protests with thousands of people. And if you stick around till the end, we might tell you about the notorious crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman. During one of his trips, he once sent hundreds of strippers to an island that he had rented out for himself. First of all, King Salman will be 87 years old in 2022, so he doesn't travel as much as he did when he was younger. However, he has managed to sneak in a few trips in the last 10 years. His most recent trip to Indonesia in 2017 was one of the most important. So let's talk about a few of the most important things about the trip. First, the king doesn't go anywhere by himself. But King Salman likes to go places, which is different from other important people. Let's just say overboard. You see, when he went to Indonesia, he brought not a few dozen or a few hundred people with him, but more than a thousand. And those almost 1,500 people came in a fleet of seven planes, including Boeing 747s, 777s, a 757, a 737, and a Lockheed C-130 Hercules transport plane. That only lasted for nine days. But if you think that's all there is to the story, you're wrong. The king also had a lot of luggage with him. How much do you want? Well, he brought over 500 metric tons worth of stuff, which is a lot. This travel luggage was bigger than two Mercedes cars and weighed more than 20 elephants put together. Now I know that when you and I travel, we always wish that there wouldn't be any other tourists where we're going. Well, it turns out that sometimes national leaders feel the same way. But they are different from us in that they don't just want to get rid of the tourists, but they also want to get rid of the people who live there. And the other difference is, they can do that. When King Salman went to the south of France in 2015, he did his usual thing of bringing a huge group of people with him and having airborne security. He also had a whole beach closed off for his own enjoyment and safety. You see, during a trip that was planned with the French government, which has been building new business relationships with Saudi Arabia and other Gulf Arab countries for the past three years, King Salman decided to live in a beautiful town on the Mediterranean coast called Valeris, in a villa. It's interesting that other well-known people have also chosen to visit the same place. More specifically, it is the place where Rita Hayworth and Prince Ali Khan's wedding party was held in 1949. And as expected, King Salman went there with a huge group of over a thousand people, including servants, princes, and other important people. Because of this, the local media brought a lot of attention to the area, which helped the local economy. However, he cut short his three-week visit to leave Morocco in just a few days. So what could have gone wrong to ruin this otherwise perfect scene? At the time of the visit, King Salman was 80 years old, so he wasn't in the best shape for a lot of walking. Because of this, he likes to bring whole elevators with him when he travels. These elevators can be put together and taken apart as needed. And he put one of these elevators down to the beach in front of the villa. He also wanted to enjoy the peace of the beach and make sure his elevator was safe. It caused a lot of trouble for people who lived nearby and went to the beach. Within a few days of his arrival, nearly 150,000 people signed an online petition asking King Salman to leave the beach. In the past, a king might have seen this as a sign of disrespect and gone to war as a result. King Salman said that he respected the French people and hoped that his schedule would allow him to go to nearby Cannes next year. 
where the famous film festival is held every year. He then left the country so that the French people could once again go to the beautiful beaches. Those are just two of the king's most recent trips. Before those, he went to Russia, where he brought his famous golden escalator with him and had 800 kilograms or 1,764 pounds of food from his home country brought in every day. He also paid for the entire famous Moscow Ritz Hotel the whole time he was there. Both President Barack Obama and President Donald Trump stayed there during their trips, but they didn't book the whole place. When he came to the US on a state visit in 2015, he did the same thing by booking all 222 rooms at the Four Seasons Hotel in Georgetown, Washington, DC. Now that's nice for the king, but anyone who has followed Saudi politics in recent years knows that the current king's son, Prince Mohammed bin Salman, is really in charge of the country. He has stirred up a lot of controversies, among other things, because he was involved in the war in Yemen and will replace his father as king in the next 10 years. What about how he spends his own money? Well, you'll be happy to hear that Salman is not only following in his father's footsteps, but he might even be more lavish than his father. So let's talk a bit about that now, since the member of his official trips has been going up. Most of them have been diplomatic trips, not vacations, but that doesn't mean that the king's regent doesn't take the same pump with him when he travels, even if it's for work. For example, during the prince's recent trip to Pakistan, which has been a longtime ally of Saudi Arabia, his plane was followed by a whole squadron of JF-17s and F-16s from the Pakistan Air Force while he was in Pakistani airspace. If that wasn't enough to show how important he was, the country's prime minister met him at the airport and took him to the prime minister's home. Then there was the time when the prince decided to go to everyone's favorite West Coast place. In order to get Hollywood executives to talk about his country, he went up to the one and only Los Angeles. So what did he decide to do with his time on this official trip? Well, he booked the entire Four Seasons in Los Angeles, which, if you didn't already know, was in Beverly Hills. The best part is that he didn't even stay at the hotel. Instead, he gave it to his group and stayed somewhere else for security reasons. Surprisingly, this is not the first time he has done something like this. He did the same thing before in New York City at the Plaza Hotel when he was in town for a conference with his group. When he went to France for three days earlier that same year, he didn't have as much luggage as his father did. But it was still more than a truckload. But even with that, these trips are nothing compared to what he does on his vacations. And his secret party in the Maldives, a beautiful country made up of islands in the Indian Ocean, was the best proof of that. During that trip, Muhammad bin Salman not only rented out an entire island called Vela, which is made to be one of the most luxurious and expensive places in the world, it had things like four dozen private villas, private decks, and swimming pools that covered a quarter of the island, and even snow machines that can turn a tropical island into a snowy scene. The most amazing thing is that they hired more than 150 models to entertain only a few dozen men from the Middle East. All told, this super exclusive event cost the prince a whopping $50 million. What can you say about how the king travels? Does he go beyond your standards? Or is he just enjoying his luxury? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked and enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more insightful videos, get notified by clicking the bell button below. From the high-end stories of today, this has been Modern Luxury. As always, we look forward to seeing you again in one of our videos. Thanks for watching.